everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler. And I'm Chris Knight. And today, Profoto has challenged us to use as many lights as we want, but we have to use all hard light reflectors with the theme of the Pantone color of the year, Viva Magenta. Now, Chris and I, we love these sorts of challenges because you get to watch how two photographers can take the same theme, but have completely different results. I'll be doing something a little bit more environmental and cinematic. And I'm going to be doing something high fashion, colorful, bright and poppy. And each of these results represent our style. So, Stay tuned for the behind the scenes and let us know in the comments which one is your favorite. All right, so I've got three different lights, three different hard reflectors, and the theme of Viva Magenta. So let's get started. Let's talk about our main light. I am using a Profoto Soft Light Reflector Silver, which is basically a silver beauty dish. The reason I chose this is because having a silver beauty dish is going to give me a little bit harder light, a little bit more specular, shiny light, which is gorgeous on this subject's cheekbones and jawlines. There's amazing bone structure. But the other reason I wanted a harder light is it's going to pick up some of the sheen on the fabric. But we have one more creative element coming into play here. The plate in the center of the beauty dish is typically going to be plastic, but here we have a glass plate. This is going to give us a more even gradient of light, more even illumination on our subject for more pleasing results. So let's take a look at what we have from our first light. Okay, and just cross your arms right there. Perfect, and take one half step back. Great. So you can see this beautiful, rich quality of light on our subject, and I would be happy to shoot it just like this, but we have two more lights to go. So our second light on the left-hand side of the frame is going to be our fill light. And here I'm using a wide zoom reflector. The reason I've chosen this is because it's going to give us a wider spread of light, hence the name. So I have added a magenta gel. And by using the wide zoom, it's going to cover the scene and fill the scene with pink. So let's add our second strobe. Right, so taking a look at the addition of this light, you can see that all of the shadows on the left-hand side of the frame and the side of the subject's body are now filled in with this beautiful pink color that is uniting the subject and the background and the dress all into one color palette. And so now it's time to add our third strobe. This is going to be our background light. And I've selected a zoom reflector with a 10 degree grid. Now the grid helps control the spread, the spill of light. And so what it's going to do is give us this beautiful glow, pocket of light behind the subject for a little bit of extra separation. This also is going to give more of a feeling of depth. All right, so third light. Beautiful. All right, you can see that that's giving us just a little bit more of a glow, a little bit more depth, and I love the look. But I do want to pop over into Capture One, into the color editor and select our pinks. Then I recommend going to hue and instead of grabbing it and making it a little bit more purple, I'm going to go the other direction and add a little bit more red, which is more accurate to this year's color. Now before I shoot, I wanna add one more thing into the equation. This is something I've been doing all the time. It's called shutter drag. I'm going to purposefully use the wrong shutter speed, a long shutter speed one tenth of a second, a sixth of a second. And while doing so, I'm going to move my camera or have my subject move. What this does is create ghostly blurs, beautiful streaks of color and light. It is not sharp, it is not correct, but it is beautiful and artistic. So I'm going to work with shutter drag, without shutter drag, different compositions, and I may add another grid to the beauty dish to control the spill of light on the background. I've got a lot to work with here, so let's get the shot. That wraps me up for my Viva Magenta set using three hard light reflectors. Love the shots, super happy with what we got. For this set, using all hard light reflectors, I want to go for something a little bit more cinematic. And for that, we have to not just light the person, we also have to light the space. And we've chosen to use a lot of lights, as I like to do sometimes. Uh, lighting, I was once told it's very easy, it's all about putting light where you want it, blocking light where you don't. The hard part is really knowing what you want. 
And this isn't about a formula. This isn't about something that you can go, oh, I'm gonna copy that and move it to somewhere else. It's about a way of thinking about light, almost kind of like using a paintbrush. And so I look at the scene and I, I build it one light at a time. Uh, where there needs to be light, I add it. Where I want there to be more shadows, I take it away. So you'll see that with a lot of these modifiers, I've chosen to use a lot of grids because that helps me isolate where that light is going, spilling, and being controlled from. Uh, we've also chosen in this particular case to work with something of an analogous color palette. Magenta is definitely still on theme. We're using a lot of magenta, but I'm kind of expanding that color palette uh, to use kind of some cyans and some blues to just make it feel a little bit richer and a little bit less, say, kind of one-dimensional in terms of color. For this, we have used seven lights. And even though I do spend a lot more time usually lighting a scene than I do the subject, I wanna kinda of take you through the subject first, and then we'll move on to the scene. So, starting over here, the key light just off the face camera right is a zoom reflector with a five degree grid. There is no gel on this. I wanted to kind of keep the color on the face as neutral as I can. And a lot of times I use this as almost an anchor point, unless I'm really leading into something super creative with color. The fill light is a wide zoom reflector with a grid and a blue gel. This is preventing that blue from going everywhere, making the image too bright, kind of concentrating a sense of blue, mostly to the face and maybe a little bit to that nearby area. On the camera left side of the image, I have used a magnum reflector with a grid and a magenta gel. This is kind of augmenting that Fresnel practical light in the background that isn't actually lighting the scene. It's really just a lamp. And so this kind of makes it look like that light is doing something. But in this particular case, I get to control the power and I get to add a magenta color, which is on theme for the image. Over the right shoulder, I've got an A2 with a click magnum and a peacock gel. This is adding just a little bit of dimension uh, to the image, a little bit of a rim light in that back right side, and just kind of introducing another color to expand that color palette. This whole setup and table is really just in a hallway. And that hallway I picked because I thought it was interesting in front of a couple of closet doors. I chose to open up those closet doors. Uh, we filled it with a haze machine to kind of add some atmosphere. And inside are two B10 pluses on stands, pretty high up. Each of those lights uh, doesn't have a reflector. Uh, they are just wrapped in rose pink gels. Lastly, down at the end of the hall, I have another B10, and that is also using a rose pink gel as well. This just adds a little bit more depth to the shadows and kind of extends the image a little bit more into the hallway. So you might ask, A, why do you use that many lights? And B, uh, why do you use all the different lights? Uh, well, one, because I wanted to. Uh, I, I like using a lot of lights because they allow me to kind of uh, paint with light in a really fun, creative way, and I really enjoy that process. It also lets me get really specific and really hone in on what that light needs to be. And if you look at the way cinematographers do this in films, they spend a tremendous amount of time with a huge crew to kind of do that thing. And I, I really love the craft of that, and so I like to try to introduce that into the stills. Secondarily, why all the different kinds of lights? I've got Pro 11s, I've got B10 Pluses, I've got B10s, I've got A2s. Sometimes it's about just what's on hand. And at the end of the day, light is light and you use whatever tools you have available to make the images you wanna make. So that being said, let's grab the shot. Right, guys, you see that we came up with two completely different results. I went with something high fashion, avant-garde styling. I played around with shutter drag. And I went with something a little bit more like layered light with lots of different modifiers and seven lights uh, in my setup. And now it's your turn to let us know which setup, which look you liked best in the comments. Of course, let us know why. But here's the thing. It's not about what image is necessarily objectively better. It's really about what speaks to you at the end of the day. Yeah, so if you want to see the gear that we use to make these two totally different images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. See you next time, guys. Bye -bye.